the spiritual ego it is a doozy i think because i am um, such a person with a, with a complex about duty that's been part of my life that um spiritual ego can just latch onto that because the whole idea of duty is like the perfect thing for the spiritual ego to be like oh yes i need to do my duty and i know what's best and this is what needs to happen all the time so I really, <clears throat> I really got to see the spiritual ego in action myself back when I was, when I w was actually after I stopped being totally vegan. I looked back at myself and saw the judgment inherent in that that I had for other people. And whenever there's any, whenever you're judging anyone, it's ego, always, hundred percent. It's always ego. The only thing that judges is ego. Judge yourself, you judge others, ego. Um, and veganism is one of those pe areas where you can see spiritual ego a lot with, um, with other people, with yourself, any kind of judgment of others. Again, it's ego. But it's so much, the spiritual ego can be so much, so much more than that. It was affecting me in so many ways before. And it probably, it probably still is in ways I can't see. Um, but just an example, you know, the guidance was coming in for me to get stuff to set up this home. Um, it was like, get a TV and a couch. And these are things that I had gotten rid of before. I gotten rid of TV for my house in, in the whole period of making space, finding who I was, getting rid of distractions, connecting with myself. Um, and that was necessary. I talked about the pendulum before. I had to swing way out here, clean out all kinds of stuff so that it could actually come back. That's the purpose of it, um, so that it could come back. And so that was it trying to come back, and the, and the spiritual ego was like, no, no, we don't do those things. We don't sit on the couch and relax. We don't have a TV. We don't watch TV. We don't watch any shows. Um, and so... Allowing that took a lot of trust and surrender for me, allowing that, that to happen, to follow the guidance that was telling me to do that. It took a lot of trust and surrender. Um, and so the other day, I think it was Saturday morning, I'm really, I, I got onto a trip to the supermarket with my kids and we just been in the flow, kind of filling out what we were meant to get. Um, and I had picked up some everything bagels and some cream cheese, and some uh, some lox, some salmon. Um, and like, getting bagels and cream cheese is something that would totally be judged by the spiritual ego, in me at least. Like that was, you don't eat that. But I was like, you know what? I'm just listening to the feelings now because I understand that I've been ignoring them. I'm just gonna do that. So so I had get, gotten that stuff and it's, and it's this morning, that morning, and I'm, uh, I'm like, what do I feel like eating? Oh, I feel like making that bagel with cream cheese and locks. So I make it. And then I also had a rule that I always, whenever I ate, I had to sit at the table and focus on the meal entirely and not do anything else because that's the right thing to do and anything else is a wrong thing to do. Hello, spiritual ego. Um, but I was listening to my body and my heart and it's like, well, why don't you just sit on the couch and eat this? That would be nice. Um, and maybe you could put something on. So I'm like, okay, that sounds that sounds really nice to do. Um, so I sit down on the couch and I and I do that. And I um, I had watched it one episode of The Witcher before, and then I was like, no, I can't, I can't watch shows. Um, and so again, it came up in reality again. A friend told me, hey, you should watch The Witcher. There's just some interesting stuff in there. And I was like, well, that's what's, that's funny. So, so I'm really tuning into my heart and it's like the exact thing I want to do is sit here and eat while watching The Witcher. That sounds amazing. Like such an amazing, relaxing thing to do. Just get lost in all the feelings of the eating and the show and just be present with that. And I was like, okay, that sounds great. Um... And within the first minute of the show, I'm just bawling. I'm just crying. 
because of what's happening in the show, because of what I'm allowing myself to do, because of all of it. I'm just, and it's wonderful, so wonderful to feel, to experience, to be a human being, to not be a spiritual ego walking around, judging everything. It was amazing. So liberating and beautiful. I, I can't even, so that's that balance, right? Coming back, coming back. The feminine and the masculine. Um, the other big example I have from my life is I had kicked all IT stuff out of my life. I was like, no, I will do none of it. Actually, there's two There's two related examples of this. So I'll do none of it because I'd also kicked out social media before. Um, and ever since I got back from Rhythmia, I started using social media a lot to share the videos, to connect to people. And it's, it's been amazingly useful and not some kind of useless distraction in my life, right? Because I was using it in a balanced way. Um, that's, that's a technology example. Another one, and this one's really big for me, is um, my co-parent has been telling me for years that, um, and these are the kind of messages we get from reality, for years that I should really look into get back, getting back into programming um, to be a good avenue for abundance. Like, you know, that was how she was seeing it. Um, I was just completely in resistance. I'm like, I don't do that. And I had been in resistance to programming a long time anyway because I had decided that I was a IT management person and I didn't do programming. Um, so for years I'd been avoiding it anyway. And then I wasn't doing IT at all, management other or otherwise, you know, I wasn't even like using a computer. And that's been slowly coming back and she had mentioned it again and I was in total resistance to it. She went to the store, she got some books. She was talking about me doing some, some stuff with kids with programming. Um, and she came back and she had these books and I was once again listening to the feelings and they were like, yeah, do you remember how much you love programming and how talented you were at it? Do you remember that? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? What is this judgment about this thing that is so right for you to be doing for, for what you love and who you are? And again, I just listened to that and I was like, oh, yes, of course, this is bringing things into balance, not having a spiritual ego really listening to the guidance. Um, so that's coming, that's coming back to, so it'll be your authentic self, which is the the, the life coaching and, the, and these kind of videos. Um, and then there'll be this, this programming thing that I don't really know. I know that I, I thought about having apps that were related to your authentic self, so that, you know, they could come together in that way. I don't really know. It's the new and the strange, right? How does programming relate to all of this? It's creation, it's um, creativity and creation. So that's, that's really good to open myself up to it. I've known that is important for a while too. And this is a good avenue for it. So that's also happening. So many big changes when you really listen and let yourself be in that balanced place, not having the pendulum. You swing it, you gotta swing it over here to, to remove all the stuff from your life that is not you. But then you gotta also let it come back. And I think when you swing it so far is where the spiritual ego can really happen. Big time, you can stay stuck in it for for a while. I know Matt Cotton talked about like being, not being human for a while in his life where he was just in this other kind of place where there was it was you weren't allowed to be upset about anything you weren't allowed you just you were always a space for everything and everything was totally fine and you know the entire focus on what is what's the lesson what's the growth right which yes that's happening um but you gotta have boundaries and you gotta speak your truth to people if they're not you know respecting you and it's not entirely on you to just be like oh it's fine it's fine what you're doing do whatever you're doing for as long as you need to do it i'm <laughs> Right, um, so we're over here when we're doing things like that, I think. And it's different for everybody, and this is just my experience with it, but as you do that, as you remove everything from your life to make space, just walk, keep be, have an awareness about, about this, where you can start to be totally in a, 
my spiritual ego.